The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. We're in the study. I think one of the most important things that we can look at, and that is uh, the thing that I believe trips up uh, more Christians and stops us from having victory than just about any other thing in our lives. And that is this thing of bitterness. Bitterness and all that goes with that. I want to just read, uh, we're going to be going to the Bible that I'm going to use today, but I have copied down here from the Amplified Bible uh, a broader interpretation of the passage that starts us off each week. That's Ephesians 4, 30 through 32. It says this in the Amplified Bible, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. In parentheses, do not offend or vex or sadden him, by whom you were sealed, that is, marked, branded as God's own, secured, for the day of redemption, that is, of final deliverance through Christ from evil and all its consequences of sin. Verse 31, let all bitterness, now there's our topic, let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, that is, passion, rage, of bad temper and resentment, that is, anger and animosity, and quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention, and slander, that is, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous language, be banished from you with all malice, that is, spite, ill will, or baseness of any kind, and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, Tender-hearted, that is, compassionate, understanding, love-hearted, uh, for, forgiving one another readily and freely, as God in Christ forgave you. Now, as we move back up here and look at this a little more detail, it says, be banished from you. Now, in the New King James Version that we normally use, it is put away all these things. Put away. In other words, we're to... We're to gather all these things up and get rid of them. <laughs> it's like having a clean sweep down four and a half and toss all the trash over the fantail. If you're an old military guy, you know what I mean by saying that. It's sweep it up and get rid of it. Get rid of these things because these are the things that are hindering us from, from knowing the fullness of the victory that is ours in Christ. If we're going around with bitterness and indignation and wrath in our in our uh, spirit, we're quarrelsome, we're uh, speaking evil of other people. We can't have the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we need to get rid of these things. Just sweep them up and get rid of them. Now let me just say this about this matter. Sometimes people will say, well, I don't get mad, I get even. Well, let me suggest this to you. The next time you want to get even, why don't you get even for all the good things that people have done for you instead of the bad things that you suppose they have done to you? So think about that a little bit. Get even on that side of it. <laughs> now, what we have done in the last couple of broadcasts, and here again, I'll refer back to the website and the archive there. You can catch up if you'll go there and, and follow through with that, and uh, you can catch up on what we've been studying. But what we've done there is we have used as, a, as an illustration for this thing of bitterness and resentment and anger and so forth. We've used the story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15. Now in Luke chapter 15, there's three stories, three parables that Jesus tells there. And the last one is about what we call the prodigal son. Prodigal means wasteful. But you know what? There's two sons in that story, the prodigal son and the pouting son. And we see in that pouting son, that elder brother, we see in him the things that we're told here in Ephesians to get out of our lives. Sweep it up and get rid of it. 
And so what we've done is use that just sort of as an illustration of how people behave, how they act, how they react when they're filled with bitterness, anger, rage, uh, pent-up anger. Let me uh, share this little story with you as we're getting started. Now, this is a true story. This, as a matter of fact, I could give you the fellow's name, but I'm not going to do that. I won't give you his true name. But it happened at uh, First National Bank in Homestead, Florida. And this has been several years ago. And uh, this is a news story. <laughs> and what happened is this man came up to the drive-in uh, of the bank and he wanted to do some business there with a teller at the drive-in window. Well, somehow they got crossways and, and he just got madder and madder and madder. Here's someone that's probably got a lot of pent-up anger just looking for a place to explode. You know, it's kind of like being spring-loaded and sitting on ready and all it needs is just some little thing to pull the trigger. Well, he got so upset he said to the teller, he said, all right, he said, I just want to close out my account. And, and she said, well, sir, you can do that, but you have to see the manager, and the manager is, uh, is inside, and the bank has already been locked for the night. And the man got so angry that he, he cranked up his car, he pulled around the front of the bank, and he smashed through the front glass of the bank with his car. And when the police got there, he was sitting there at the manager's desk. Now, now, you know, we can laugh about something like that, but every one of us have had occasions when we have gotten just that mad. And if it weren't for something holding us back, we might have done something just that silly and that foolish. Anger, bitterness, rage, all these things that we read about here in the Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30 through 31. Uh, the, all of those things, all of those things uh, come under that heading, and we all struggle with those. But what we're talking about is how to get rid of bitterness. Now, we know that Satan, when it comes to, to uh, roots of bitterness, uh, Satan has got a green thumb when it comes to planting roots of bitterness in our hearts. But you know what? We don't have to give him fertile ground. We don't have to cultivate our, our hearts in such a way that when he plants or tries to plant that root of bitterness, that it's going to take hold and, and produce a root of bitterness. And so let's, let's study about this. And today I want us to move away from that story that Jesus told about the, the brother that wouldn't let it go. We called him the bitter brother. And now we're trying to discover how to be a better brother. Uh, we saw there that that bitter brother, he'd worked hard at being a good son, but he was a lousy brother. And friends, so many of us, we work hard at being good sons and daughters of God, but we need to work hard too to be good brothers and sisters too in the family of God. And one of the ways that we do that is by forgiving others, getting rid of that root of bitterness, getting rid of that anger, letting it go, and, and move on from there. Now, I'm going to go over at this time to uh, Matthew chapter 18. And here's another story that Jesus told that's a great illustration for our point. And this is about a lack of forgiveness. And the story I'm looking at here is in Matthew chapter 18. It begins at verse 21, and it goes right on down through the end of the chapter. And the, the chapter title in the book uh, that I'm using, the Bible that I'm using, is The Parable of the Unforgiving Servant. Now, you may know this story. Let me just run through it very quickly. I don't want to read it all in detail. There was a time of accountability. The master decided he was going to settle accounts it was audit time, we might say. And so he began to settle the accounts of his servants. And he came to one servant, and he called him in. He, he audited his account to see what he owed the master and found out that he owed him. Now, one of the modern translations put it this way, $10 million. It's hard to imagine a servant owing a master that much, but look, that's what it said, $10 million. Well, the master demanded payment, and the servant couldn't pay, and he, he got down and he begged and begged and begged, and the master forgave him $10 million. Now, this is a pretty big story to begin with, but this is a story that Jesus told. It's another parable. 
And so the, the master took pity on him and forgave him. Then the story goes that he went out, this servant went out, and he saw a fellow servant of his that only owed him, and one translation's had it about 20 or $30. Now that's, that's not much when you consider $10 million that he had owed. But when he sees this fellow servant that owes him only 20 or $30, the scripture says that he goes over and he demands payment. And uh, he, it says here uh, that he laid his hands on him. Now get this, he took him by the throat, <laughs> saying, pay me what you owe. I mean, like we would say today, he got a handful of his neck. <laughs> he's, he's from a, the Godfather Collection Agency. You talk about a bill collector. He got him by the throat, got a handful of his neck and said, pay me. So his fellow servant, the Bible says, fell down at his feet and begged him just like he had, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Now get this. He's asked for mercy, just like he received mercy. And get verse 30 here. And it says here, And he would not, but he would not, and went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. He would not. Now I want us to key in on that, would not. This is a, a Greek word that it's used about, oh, 210 times uh, in the New Testament, and 177 or so times, it's used as a matter of an act of the will. Now, that's important. I want you to, to make note of that. So, as an act of his will, he would not forgive his fellow servant, even though the amount was very, very small. Now, I want you to notice that would not, because you can't see that in your English Bible, but in the Greek, this is in a tense that is that would be emphatic, it would be a, a tense that, that is a, uh, a permanent, his mind was permanently set on this. He is permanently set on not forgiving. He, as an act of his will, is not willing to forgive his fellow servant. Now let's go on in the story. We've only got a short time here on the program and I want to try to get in as much of this as we can. If we don't get to the end of what we need to look at. We'll come back next week and pick it up again. Uh, look at verse uh, 31. Now this is Matthew 18, 31. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then the master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you, mercy on you? And the master was angry and delivered him to the tormentors, the tormentors, until he should pay all that was due him. And I get this, as Jesus says this, So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Now, dear people, this is serious stuff. You say, well, I, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I'm, I'm filled with the Spirit, but I just don't have the joy of the Lord in my life. I, I don't have power in my life. My prayer life is no good. It just doesn't seem to go anywhere. Maybe it's because there's something or someone in your past that you need to go back and you need to grant forgiveness. What's the basis for that? You may think, and it may come immediately to your mind, someone or some group or whatever that, that has uh, really affected you, really hurt you. Remember, bitterness is holding on to a hurt until that hurt has hold of you. And so that hurt has got you. What's eating on you? We say to people sometimes, and what's eating on us a lot of times is bitterness, anger, pent up rage over some incident in the past. Now here's what he says here. He says that he delivered him to the tormentors. And my dear friend, if you have unforgiveness in your heart toward anyone, I want to say this to you based on the word of God, you are in the hands of the tormentors. 
That's why when you hear that person's name mentioned, or you see them at Walmart, <laughs> or, or you hear something uh, good that's happened to them, or you hear something bad that's happened to them, that's, that's why you get all revved up in your spirit about it. It's because the tormentors have a hold of you. And there's a lot of people that lay awake nights in torment over something that's happened to them in the past. Now, let me say this to you. I am not making light of whatever you may have suffered at the hands of someone. Uh, you'd be amazed how many people I talk to, uh, people uh, that, many people that phone in from our program that we get to talking and praying together and they have been through so many hard things, so many terrible, terrible things in their lives and been treated so badly. But, but my dear friend, I'm trying to say this to you. No matter how hard that experience was, you're still putting yourself through agony over that if you're not willing to grant forgiveness. Now, it says here that he would not. Remember, I, I want you to take note of that because it's a matter of the will and not a matter of our feelings. I think it was D.L. Moody that said that someone who says, well, I'm willing to bury the hatchet, but I'm not going to forget. It's like someone who says, I'm going to bury the hatchet, but I'm going to leave the handle sticking up. <laughs> And uh, I think it was Beecher that said, if someone says, I'll forgive, but I won't forget, it's like saying, really, I don't forgive. Now, dear people, listen, when we forgive someone, that doesn't mean we're going to forget it altogether. And we're still going to have a struggle with some emotions based on whatever happened to us. But here's what we can do, and that is we can obey the Word of God, and as an act of our will, specifically forgive that person. Now here's a good exercise for you to do. Here's a good way to make it real. Get you out a sheet of paper. This is in your quiet place, in your quiet time when you're just alone with the Lord and begin to write names down. You don't have to write down the whole history of what happened. If that's helpful, go ahead and do it. But just write the names down of people as the Holy Spirit brings them to your mind uh, he, God wants you to be rid of this stuff. This is, this is grieving the Spirit of God. You wonder why the Spirit isn't powerful in your life? Because He's grieved. Because He's grieved. He's hurt because you won't release this. And that's, that's, that's keeping you from walking in the power of God. And it's also keeping you from having peace. And so make a list of those people. And then and then just sit there and go through each one of those names. It may be a long list. It may be only one name. But it's whatever, whoever that person is or that situation is where you got hurt so bad. It might have been just yesterday. It might, be, it might have been 20 or 30 or 50 years ago when you were hurt. But you've just never gotten over it. Write that name down. And then as an act of your will, not of your emotion, if you wait for your emotions to get lined up, it'll never get done. But as an act of your will, just like it says here, make a determination and just sit there and say, I forgive this person. I forgive them for what they did to me. I forgive this person for backbiting. I forgive this person for abusing our friendship. I forgive this person for abusing me physically. So many out there have been abused and, and hurt physically by people that were put in their lives to be their protectors and not those that would be bringing harm and hurt into their lives. But I, I'm not talking about what's, look, it's like a, it's like a young, young fellow got up in a prayer meeting one time and he said, Lord, I want justice. I pray for justice. And then an older fellow got up and said, Lord, we don't need justice. We need mercy. And so let, let's, let's practice mercy. That's what he's talking about. We should have mercy. You say, they don't deserve mercy. Well, friend, that's why it's called mercy. <laughs> if they deserved it, it wouldn't be mercy. It would be just. It would be justice. And so we release these people and, and, and let, let it go. You remember a few weeks ago I talked about that old oak tree that had been marred by Yankee cannon fire and, and Robert, uh, Robert E. Lee said to the lady, dear, cut it down and let it go. 
And that's what we need to do with this root of bitterness, this anger, this, this thing that keeps hanging over us. Cut it down and let it go. And this is how we do it. We do it as an act of our will. Now, I want to make this very clear. If you don't do this, if we're not willing to do this, then we are in violation of God's requirements, of God's uh, desires for us, His will for us. Listen to what Jesus said back over in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. He said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And then after He had taught His disciples to pray, He, he says in, in part of that uh, prayer, He says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then as a commentary on that prayer he says in verses 14 and 15 of uh, chapter of chapter 6 in Matthew he says for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive them their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses now, dear people, I don't think that means you lose your salvation, but I know this, that you can't live at peace and you can't have power. Your prayers are even hindered if you're making place for evil in your life. So it doesn't matter, really, how deep the hurt was, who did it, might have been a parent, may have been a leader, might have been someone, your very, very best friend, someone that you loved with all your heart and you thought they would... They would be your friend for BFF, best friend forever. It might be a, a former mate that hurts you, might have hurt you physically for your own sake and for the sake of being obedient to God. Let it go. Forgive. Get that sheet of paper out. Write those names down. Make this practical, as practical as you can. It may be someone who's already died. Put their name down. This needs to be real in your heart. And forgive each one as you go through that list. I urge you to do that. Would you do that?